this video, I'm gonna show you how I like to use direct flash. I know, sounds kind of crazy, right? But I'm gonna do both on-camera flash and then show you the difference between this versus something like a ring light. Let's get into it. My name is Pai. I've been fortunate to create multiple successful companies in the photography space. I'm a photographer, but even more so, I would say I'm an educator and frameworks person. My specialty, making complex subjects easy for you to master, right here on Adorama TV. What's up friends, my name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. We are in the studio and we're talking direct flash. I know direct flash sounds kind of cringy and to be honest, I don't really like using it for the most part, except when we're talking about using direct flash for stylistic effect. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Real quick before we jump in, what we'll be comparing and kind of giving techniques on is, well, just on-camera flash, which I have the Canon R5 with a 20 to 70 on this side, and a Profoto A10 on top for our on-camera flash. And on this side, I have the Flashpoint R200. This is a ring flash, which connects to the Evolve 200 power packs, which I have in my back pocket. So you know what? I'm gonna put these things down. I'm gonna talk about first, stylistically, when I like to use direct flash. So let's do that. In the meantime, I'm gonna actually introduce Kiara, who is setting up her own <laughs> behind the scenes camera. This is perfect. Yeah, this is exactly when you should start filming her. So we will link her up so you can give her a follow. When you're done recording your own footage, why don't you come on to, I love that we caught her doing this. Okay, come on to set. We will link her up so you guys can give her a follow. And uh, you guys know Kiara. So check this out. I really like direct flash for stylistic purposes. And what I mean is, most of the time we don't like direct flash because it's kind of raw. It doesn't look very refined. It doesn't look soft. It's a hard direct light. It creates highlights, all that kind of stuff, right? But that's exactly it. That's kind of the purpose of direct flash. See, when we want to create a more edgy sort of a look, a less refined look, something more raw, direct flash is actually pretty fantastic. And it's something that's used quite often in editorial photography. So look, Kiara is dressed in an outfit that has a very masculine kind of feel to it. It's raw, it's edgy, it looks great. And so if I add a light that's also raw and edgy to it, meaning direct flash, it's gonna look pretty solid. But I'm gonna show you guys without just you know talking about it. So let's do this. I'm gonna start with our before shot. I'll just take the flash off so you know that there's no funny business going on. And I'm gonna bring this to one two hundred of a second. Let's go F 2.8. You're gonna have that strong kind of masculine pose, widening up the stance. There you go. Lean to one side a little bit. This is gonna be our before shot. Um, and I'm at 6,000 Kelvin, because I'm gonna keep everything exactly where it's at. So we're just basically using the room light up above head. One two hundred F 2.8. ISO 800, and boom, that looks freaking awesome. Looks actually pretty good. Um, that's because of Kiara, not because of anything that I did. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and pop the camera or the flash onto the camera. And with the A10, I'm actually gonna leave it in TTL mode. So I'm actually gonna have it determine the, uh, the, the power settings. It works very, very well when we're talking about direct flash. One thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go ahead and turn out the room lights so we don't have any of the yellows and other tones that might be coming through into the shot. Now the interesting thing that you'll see is as soon as we get this first shot, the image is actually gonna look pretty good because what we've done is we've taken kind of an edgy outfit, a strong pose, all of this and matched it with like an edgy and raw light source, right? So Kiara, go ahead and do the exact same thing. That kind of, yep, that's it right there. Same composition and boom. And that's what's so trippy about this, is immediately we have a shot that looks like this could be an editorial image. You would see something like this for celebrities and different types of magazines, look at this. Okay, so the first tip that I have when it comes to direct flash is making sure the subject matter sort of matches the raw and edgy look that the light provides. The second tip, one of the biggest mistakes that we make, you'll notice that my shots so far have been landscape aspect ratio, right? So the flash is above the camera when I shoot this way. So what I'm gonna do is actually take a shot just like this, but you know, oftentimes when it comes to editorial work, we're gonna shoot portrait aspect ratio. When we do this, we need to use a bracket for the flash because as soon as I rotate the camera and I use that direct flash to kind of try and get my subject lit, the first thing that you notice is that my shadow is gonna to go to the right or to the left of the subject and it looks very unnatural. So a bracket will allow you to keep the flash above 
the camera even when you're shooting portrait aspect ratio. I wanna go into the next piece of this. We don't shoot warm enough. So let me show you what I, I, uh, an example of this. If I actually bring my Kelvin to somewhere around, let's say what the room lights were, 4,000 Kelvin, right? And I take that exact same shot, you'll notice that immediately it doesn't look that great. It looks very cold, it looks very kind of strange compared to the warmer shot, which was at 6,000 Kelvin. So shoot, make sure that you're shooting daylight to a little bit warmer to get something that looks natural straight out of the camera. The last tip that I wanna give in just direct flash like this is to understand that the brightness of the background, so right now we just have a plain white wall, which is often the case when it comes to this sort of a look, the background is going to be a different level of brightness just based on my subject's distance from the background. So for example, if I want the background bright, I'm actually gonna step closer. So Kiara, go ahead and step close to the background. Okay, let's go to the same, go right to the edge of the curve, right there. Go to that same pose. We're gonna do the same pose for all of these. Okay, right there, perfect. Now I'm gonna keep the power and everything exactly the same, my distance as well. So Kiara, what you're gonna do is move three feet forward. I'm gonna move three feet back. Same thing. Perfect. Now, as soon as you see the second shot, you notice that the background just got a little bit darker. Let's do it again. Three feet forward, three feet back. Same pose. Boom. Same thing. One more time. So in each of these, what you begin to notice is that each time we step back, the background actually gets a little bit darker. Why? Because the subject remains the same distance from the flash, but the background's getting further away. So of course, less light is making it to the background. So this is how we can control the background brightness when we're using direct flash. Now, with this shot, I'm gonna show you the difference between this versus a ring flash. So let's do this. We took this basic straight on shot like this, and if you don't have a bracket, by the way, and you wanna shoot direct flash, just shoot a little bit wider if you wanna get full length type stuff, and don't shoot portrait aspect ratio. So shoot a little bit wider, make sure you're on a higher resolution camera that allows you to crop, and then crop to portrait aspect ratio so that you get the, the light to kind of appear natural, okay? Let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the ring flash on. We're gonna do the same pose and we're gonna compare it between the two. This is the Flashpoint R200. It'll connect directly to the Evolve 200 pack, just like this. And it has a little, you know, leather holder and whatever that you put on your belt, but I'm gonna go kind of gangster with it and just go in the back pocket. I'm gonna replace my on-camera flash with this guy. It is just large enough to actually be able to manage the front of the 28 to 70, which has a very bulbous front. So got it connected. Now what's happening is that the light is coming from all around the lens. One of the most cool things about the ring flash is the distinctive pattern that it creates on both the wall as well as in the eyes. Let me just show you. So I'm at 1 16th power. Let's take that same shot. Notice immediately that it has a very different look. It kind of fills the whole shadow in behind my subject, right? But this is when my subject is against the wall. So let's do the exact same thing. As we pull Kiara off the wall, you're gonna see the distinctive pattern, the shadow pattern that comes from a ring flash. So come three feet forward. Same thing. Boom, we start to see the shadow come three feet forward. Same thing. So each time Kiara is stepping off the background, you see more of that ring-like shadow, that even shadow that kind of highlights the entire body. All right, let's get a little bit closer to our subject. I'm gonna take the same shot so you can see kind of the difference in the shadow, the catch light, everything. What I'm gonna do is go down to ISO 200 since I'm so close to Kiara now. Let's take the first shot with the ring light. Now you can really start to see that distinctive ring light pattern that shows up in the background, right? So let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my on-camera flash. I'm not gonna worry about taking the uh, ring flash off right now, just because there's no remote attached to it. So let's just put this on TTL. Let's take the exact same shot. 
Okay, now between these, we can see even more of those distinctive differences between these two types of direct flash. Again, both give us that hard and edgy vibe to the image. But with the on-camera flash, we're getting the shadow that drops behind the subject, so long as we have the bracket keeping it above the camera. We're also getting a light source that we can direct to certain areas. So in this case, the face is more bright and the rest of the body is a little bit darker, right? Going back to the ring flash, we have not only the shadow, that's that very distinctive look, depending on the size of the ring light, It'll also change the look of the catch light in the eyes. And on top of that, notice that the light's even across the body. Why? Because, well, the light's coming from all angles of the lens. That's it for our tutorial. Now I'm gonna take a few more shots of Kiara, which you guys can see as I give this little bit of an outro. But look, don't discount direct flash just because it's direct. Honestly, when it comes to direct flash, I feel like it has its own stylistic look. Whenever you're going for that raw and edgy kind of vibe, that editorial vibe, it's a really great look so long as the light source matches the look that you have in your subject. When you put those two things together, you get fantastic images out of it. In the description of the video, you guys can check out all the gear that we used. In the meantime, we'd love for you guys to comment, like, subscribe to the channel. I actually do read all the comments. I get tons of ideas from your guys' comments. So let me know what you thought about the video, the images that we created, even if it's critique, and I'll see you guys back here, same time, same place next week. Peace.